All right, scholars, this is your listen and respond for the week of 9-16. So Monday is the 16th, and this is the listen and respond we will be doing today. It is the Great Kapook Tree for green and purple. So go ahead and write your name at the top. So you will either be doing this on the 18th or the 19th. Write the title of the story, The Great Kapook Tree. Remember, we capitalize the first letter in a title. All right, so then now we are ready to go ahead and get started. As College Ready readers, we always use College Ready sentences. We always support our ideas with evidence from the text. Preview. Readers collect clues before they get started reading. Look at the front and back covers of the book before you start reading or listening to the story. Fill in the chart below. What do you think this book is going to be about? Why do you think this? I think this book will be about blank. I think this because blank. Another thing this book might be about is blank. I think this because blank. Please note these two things should be different ideas. It's kind of pointless if you say the same thing both times. So it's kind of defeating. It's like busy work. That's not what we're doing. You're supposed to be coming up with two separate ideas about what you think this book might be about. So if I give you an idea, then you have to come up with something different. Got it? These two may match because really we're only picking stuff that we can see on the cover or on the back cover. So you could say, I think this because I see it on the cover or I think this because I read it on the back. Those are the things you could say or maybe from your own brain, right? So let's preview. We're looking at the front cover. The Great Kapook Tree, The Tale of the Amazon Rainforest by Lynn Cherry. I see a very large tree. I see all kinds of animals all over here. I see a little a man down at the bottom with an axe. All right, let's see what's on the back. All right, on the back it says, In the Amazon Rainforest, a man is chopping down a great kapook tree. Exhausted from his labors, he puts down his axe and rests. As he sleeps, the animals who live in the tree plead with him not to destroy their world. And there's a picture of a bird in the, uh, like, foliage. All right, so then now we're going to go to the first question and write down what we think this story is going to be about. So I think this book will be about the importance of... The rain forest. I think this because I read it on the back cover. All right, so you can copy what I have there. Also, I'd like to remind you, if you need to, you can put the subtitles on so that you can uh, see written at the bottom like what I'm saying. I would also like to remind you that if you need to pause or rewind or fast forward, you may do that at any time in order to get everything copied down. There's really no reason that you shouldn't be writing what I'm writing because I'm literally giving you answers. So if you're choosing not to write what I'm writing, uh, you, I mean, you can do that if you have an actual like good response that you want to get down. But if you're just not doing it because you you don't want to, that's not how we get credit for that assignment. So you need to make sure that you're writing what I am writing. Also, just because I don't write something doesn't mean that you have don't have to. So I need for you to be filling in the blanks as you go, even if I do not fill in the blanks as I go. The whole point for this is to see if you guys know how to do this. I already know how to do it and I'm trying to teach you how to do it. And if you leave it blank, there's no way for me to know if you understand or not. So I need you to fill it in. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see what we need to look for first. Number three, characters and setting. Readers know that understanding the characters and setting of a story can help them to better understand what's going on in the story. So list the characters from the story. What do you know about them? So here we're filling in like traits. We're thinking inner traits, outer traits. Remember inner things are on the inside. Stuff we can't see by looking at a person, but we can only tell like by what they say and what they do and how they act. Um, outer traits are things we can see. Oh, that person has blue hair. That person has green eyes. That's a boy. That's a girl. They're short. They're tall, right? Those are, those are outer traits. So we'll be looking for those. So let's go ahead and get started. The Great Kapook Tree. Two men 
walked into the rainforest. Moments before, the forest had been alive with the sounds of squawking birds and howling monkeys. Now all was quiet as the creatures watched the two men and wondered why they had come. The larger man stopped and pointed to a great kapook tree. Then he left. The smaller man took an axe he carried and struck the trunk of a tree. Whack! 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 The sounds of the blows rang through the forest. The wood of the tree was very hard. Chop! 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 The man wiped off the sweat that ran down his face and neck. Whack! Chop! Whack! Chop! Soon the man grew tired. He sat down to rest at the foot of the great kapook tree. Before he knew it, the heat and hum of the forest had lulled him to sleep. A boa constrictor lived in the kapook tree. He slithered down its trunk to where the man was sleeping. He looked at the gash the axe had made in the tree. Then the huge snake slid very close to the man and hissed in his ear, Senor, this tree is a tree of miracles. It is my home, where generations of my ancestors have lived. Do not chop it down. A bee buzzed in the sleeping man's ear. Senor, my hive is in this kapook tree, and I fly from tree to tree and flower to flower collecting pollen. In this way, I pollinate the trees and flowers throughout the rainforest. You see, all living things depend on one another. A troop of monkeys scampered down from the canopy of the kapook tree. They chattered to the sleeping man, Senor, we have seen the ways of man. You chop down one tree, then come back for another and another. The roots of these great trees will wither and die, and there will be nothing left to hold the earth in place. When the heavy rains come, the soil will be washed away with the forest will become a desert. So I'm going to go ahead and pause here. We have some characters that we need to write down. So the first character is the young man, right? And I think the second character I'm going to write is just animals, like they're all together. And then we won't worry about number three. So I'm telling you, you don't have to do this third one because there's not enough characters in this story. But let's go ahead and look at what we know about the animals and the young man. So for the young man, I feel like he's um, he's doing a job that he's been asked to do. Like the, the older guy came and told him to chop the tree down. So I'm going to say he's a hard worker. Well, actually, you know what? He fell asleep while he was supposed to be working, so maybe he's not a hard worker. Uh, but he is supposed to be cutting down the tree, so what could we say about him? Like, he's working. Uh, what could you say about him because he fell asleep on the job? What kind of person falls asleep when they're at work? Is that a hard worker or no? So I would say he's lazy, kind of. And then I'm going to leave this last one blank for you to fill in. Now the animals, I'm going to leave these blank. I want you to come up with some traits about these animals. What do you know about them? Are they nice animals, mean animals? What do they look like? Go ahead and fill that in. And then now we need to go to this next question. What is the setting of the story? The setting of the story is blank. How does the setting match what's happening with the characters? The setting matches what is happening with the characters because blank. So for this one, think about where they are. And think about, would this make sense if the setting was a desert? Would all these words, that, I mean, like, do boa constrictors live in the desert? No. Uh, do monkeys live in the desert? No. So why did the author choose this setting in this place, and how come it matches? So just think about other places that this story could be set in. Like, it could be set in a school. Would that make sense? Probably not. So tell me, why does the place that you write here match what's happening with the characters. So fill those two in. All right, let's go ahead and keep on reading. A toucan, a macaw, and a cock of the rock flew down from the canopy. Senor, squawked a toucan, you must not cut down this tree. We have flown over the rainforest and seen what happens once you begin to chop down the trees. Many people settle on the land. They set fires to clear the underbrush, and soon the fo forest disappears. Where once there was life and beauty, only black and smoldering ruins remain. A 
A bright and small tree frog crawled along the edge of a leaf. In a squeaky voice, he piped in the man's ear, Senor, a ruined rainforest means ruined lives, many ruined lives. You will leave many of, ho of us homeless if you chop down this great kapook tree. A jaguar had been sleeping long a branch in the middle of the tree. Because his spotted coat blended into the dappled light and shadows of the understo understory, no one had noticed him. Now he leapt down and padded silently over to the sleeping man. He growled in his ear, Senor, the kapook tree is home to many birds and animals. If you cut it down, where will I find my dinner? All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause here because I think we need to make a prediction. So let's make a prediction about what we think might happen next. So a prediction is when readers guess at what might happen next in the story based off of what's already happened and what you know in your brain about things, about life in general, right? So what do you think might happen next? Why do you think this? Something I think might happen next is blank. I think this because blank. Another thing I think might happen next is blank. I think this because blank. So remember, these two things cannot match because that would be kind of silly to have two separate things be the same. That's kind of a waste of our time. So make sure you're coming up with two different things. So something I think might happen next is, uh, what do I think might happen next? I think that the man will still want to cut down the kapook tree. I think this because people are destroying our rainforests to make money. That's something that I know in my brain and I'm using that to justify my reason that I think that he doesn't want to cut this tree down. So he does want to cut the tree down. So now I want you to come up with another thing that could happen next based off what's happened in the story. So you're going to come up with another thing I think might happen next is blank. Then tell me why you think this. I think this because blank happened in the story or I think this because I know this from my own personal experience or I know this about rainforests, right? All right, so let's keep going. Four tree porcupines swung down from the branch to branch and whispered to the man, Senor, do you know what we need? We animals and humans need in order to live? Oxygen. And Senor, do you know what trees produce? Oxygen. If you cut down the forest, you will destroy that which gives us all life. Several anteaters climbed down the kapook tree with their young clinging to their backs. The unstriped anteater said to his sleeping man, Senor, you are chopping down this tree with no thought for the future. And surely you know that what happens tomorrow depends on what you do today. The big man tells you to chop down a beautiful tree. He does not think of his own children, who tomorrow must live in a world without trees. So I'm going to pause here. I'm noticing all these animals keep talking to him about cutting down the trees and what would happen in the future. So I think this is a good time to visualize something. Readers always think about how this story might look in their heads. So you're making a mind movie, like you're imagining it happen in your brain while you're reading it, right? You're thinking about what they're seeing as they read the story in their heads. So what do you think this part of the story might look like? And why do you think this? So number one, I'm imagining the part in the story where blank is happening. I'm imagining it looks like blank. Three things to describe this are blank, blank, blank. I think this part looks like this because... Blah, blah, blah. So everybody will have this part match what I write. So you're going to copy down what I write right here. So I'm imagining the part of this story where animals tell about world with no rainforest. So I'm imagining the part in the story where the animals tell about a world with no rainforest is happening. So go ahead and copy this down. Animals, A-N-I-M-A-L-S, 
tell, T-E-L-L, about, A-B-O-U-T, world, W-O-R-L-D, with, W-I-T-H, no, N-O, rain, R-A-I-N, forest, F-O-R-E-S-T. So make sure you have that written here. If you do not write what I write in this blank, it will be counted wrong. So make sure that you're copying. And if you don't have this, all the rest of these are probably going to be wrong because it's not going to make sense. So please, please, please make sure you're following directions and writing what I'm writing in the video on this blank. So then it says, I'm imagining it looks like blank. Here you're going to write one word that what you would describe. Is this beautiful? Is it disgusting? Is it like scary? Is it exciting? Is it happy? You're telling me what does it look like in one word? Then you're going to describe what you would see if you were seeing this happen. So if there was no rainforest, what would you see? So one thing that I think we would see is dying animals. So it's the animals who say that their house is in the trees. If there's no trees for them to live in, they're going to die. They're not going to have a home. So animals are going to die. What are some other things that you might see? So I remember they said that if we don't have trees, we don't have oxygen. So what else might die if we don't have oxygen to breathe? And then why do you think this? I think this part looks like this because I feel this way about this. Blank happened in the story. I know this about rainforests. I know this about oxygen, right? You're explaining why you think that this is happening. So go ahead and do that part. And then we're going to move on to the next, the rest of the story. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the man first appeared. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding ever so slowly over to the sleeping man, she spoke in her deep and lazy voice, Senor, how much is beauty worth? Can you live without it? If you destroy the beauty of the rainforest, on what would you feast your eyes? A child from the Yanomamo tribe who lived in the rainforest knelt over the sleeping man. He murmured in his ear, Senor, when you awake, please look upon us all with new eyes. The man awoke with a start. Before him stood the rainforest child and all around him staring were the creatures who depended upon the great kapuk tree. What wondrous and rare animals they were. The man looked about and saw the sun streaming through the canopy. Spots of bright light glowed like jewels amidst the dark green forest. Strange and beautiful plants seemed to dangle in the air, suspended from the great kapuk tree. The man smelled the fragrant perfume of their flowers. He felt the steamy mist rising from the forest floor. But he heard no sound, for the creatures were strangely silent. The man stood and picked up his axe. He swung back his arm as though to strike the tree. Suddenly, he stopped. He turned and looked at the animals and the child. He hesitated. Then he dropped the axe and walked out of the rainforest. All right, so then there's this last little letter to the reader. It says, Dear readers, I wrote the Great Kapuk Tree to let the world know what happens to the rainforest creatures and to the entire planet when rainforests are destroyed. I hope that after reading this book, you will help save the rainforests. The Great Kapuk Tree is about the Amazon rainforest, which is a tropical rainforest, but we have a temperate rainforest in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States that we must protect too. Please care for Mother Earth. Together, we can make a difference. Lynn Cherry. So then uh, the area where she's talking about, like this story is taking place, is down here in, Braz in South, South America and near Brazil. So here's where the Amazon rainforest is. Uh, where she's talking about in the United States that we have one is up here in the Pacific Northwest. We have like near Oregon and Washington State, there's a, a, a temperate rainforest. Good grief. All right, so go ahead. Let's look at our last questions. We have two more questions to finish up. Number six, we're summarizing. Readers think about the most important parts of a book. In your own words, give me a summary of the story you just listened to. So the story blank, title of the story, talks about blank, 
the characters. In the beginning of the story, blank. In the middle of the story, blank. At the end of the story, blank. So it tells me, this parenthesis tells me what I write in this part. So the story, the great kapook tree talks about characters. Okay, so the man and the animals, right? We don't really know anybody's name, so we're just going to describe them. So let's see. In the beginning of the story, the man was cutting down the kapook tree. What happens next that's important to the story? And then what happens at the end of the story that's important? So go ahead and fill out those two. I gave you the beginning to get you started. Then please remember to do number seven. I've had a lot of us that are just skipping it, and it's not a choice to skip it. If you skip it, you're going to get counted wrong. So the way you do this is you're going to choose which one you want to do. Then you're going to open up Google Classroom, and then at the very top of Stream, it's got like a, it says like share with your class. If you click that part, it'll allow you to type, and that's where you're going to write your answer. So you pick one of these. You don't have to do both. You just pick one. If you choose making connections, you're going to think about the way this book is similar to your own life. You're going to title the post, Making Connections to the Great Kapook Tree. Then you're going to write about how you can connect to this book. Did something in the book remind you about something you know about in the world around you? Maybe you've seen it in a movie. Maybe you've read it in another book. Maybe you heard it on the news. You're going to say, The Great Kapook Tree connects to me because in the story, blank happens, and in my life, blank happened. So you're telling me the part in the story that you're connecting to and how it connects to you in your life. If you don't want to do that one, you can't think of any connections to the story, you could do the story continued. The way you would do this is you're thinking about what might happen next if the book were to keep going. So you would say the Great Kapook Tree continued. And then you would say, like, what happens next? Does the man go get more people to help him cut the tree down? Do the animals like protect the trees and nobody ever comes back and cuts the trees down? What happens next? So if the story were to keep going, what would be the next thing that was that you would read in the story? Um, once you've finished all this, make sure your name is at the top and please turn it in. Then you may work on word work for this week. You're doing pages eight, no, seven, eight, nine. After you finish that, you can fin you can hop to Lexia and finish up your minutes. If you finished everything, then you may read silently in the reading center.